Hi, I'm Frank Massiosi, and I'm here with the season's kickoff of With Summit Fire. I have with me Chief Eric Evers on my right and Deputy Chief Don Nelson on my far right. Chief, great Frank, to see nice you. Nice to see you too. Frank, Don. nice to see you again. Okay. So now, Don, you're an old hand for With Summit Fire. I am. Uh, but Chief, you're uh, sort of the new guy here. I'm new to the camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so last season we heard uh, we heard all about Don and where he grew up and a little bit of background. So uh, I'd like to like for you to tell the folks a little bit about yourself. You're from Summit. Sure, yeah, yeah. I am a, a born and raised in Summit. I went to Summit School System here. I became a firefighter in 1990. Worked my way up through the ranks and became I was promoted the chief last June when Don became a uh, deputy chief. Um, yep. Married. I have uh, three kids, one stepkid who is currently serving in the U.S. Coast Guard. Okay. Just got deployed to Hawaii uh, this, this Saturday. So we to like Hawaii? This. Hawaii, yeah. Nice. yeah. They, gave him a pick. they gave him a pick, and he became number one in his class, so he picked out a little Hawaii. So he'll be there for the next Fantastic. five years. So. so now there have been some changes since um, last season. Um, uh, a fair number of changes. Um, the old chief has retired. Yes. He's still in the area. Yep, I Joe Alp, yeah, Joe Alp. Yep. Joe, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, he was he was your guest on the last episode. Correct. He was. He uh, that was kind of his outgoing hurrah, so to speak. It was the last show that he did, and uh, it was quite a good interview. Okay. So uh, now we're here with the new guy. Okay. <laughs> now, you were promoted from battalion chief. To deputy correct, chief, yes. correct? Okay. Yes. Yep. Now who took your place as battalion chief? Uh, well, we have a couple. Uh, Clint Evers actually took my place. He's okay. uh, now currently a battalion chief. And then along the line, we've had uh, Lieutenant Mbimbo. Brian Harnoy is also a lieutenant. Uh, and then down the list, we have some new firefighters. Uh, Matt Lemons, Tom Penn. Um, we had John Bonzo back in 2015. Um, and we also have, uh, did I say Tom Penn? Yeah, Tom Penn. Penn. Yeah. yeah, so we have quite a few guys. I'm yeah, sure I left somebody out. Yeah, but. that is a few. And plus new volunteers as well. Yeah, right? we just, uh, actually I just did a two hour interview at one today. So uh, yeah, we have quite a few. We're yep. just, I think we just put on about six new volunteers. Okay. So, it's so what's, your, busy. what's your total head count, um, uh, regular and volunteer separate? Uh, there's 32 career. Yep. And right now I believe we're up to about 16? 18. 18, yeah. 18, 18 volunteers. volunteers. 32 so, and 18. Yeah. 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 And volunteer is like a path correct. to becoming yeah. career. Yes. Correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah, currently they, they serve a support role. Uh -huh. so they, um, when we get active fires, they support the uh, online personnel. And it's kind of their career path to become paid. So they have, they have, to, they have to be a, paid, a volunteer for two years. Have to be. Yeah. Okay. So in those two years, they, uh, they have to live in a um, um, contingent town, town that's up to summit. Okay. And during those two years, we send to a variety of schools to get them the basic knowledge become a uh, firefighter. Okay. And the goal is when they get two years on the job, when, when a test becomes available, they'll take the test for promotion to the career division. So it's okay. a good way of getting to know the guys, kind of weeding out what they can and can't do, you know, ability-wise. So it's a good, good process. It works very well for us. Now, are there things that they're not permitted to do until their career? Yeah, because of the um, amount of hours of training mm -hmm. all firefighters need on the line, uh, they cannot drive frontline personnel. I'm, I'm sorry, they cannot drive frontline apparatus. Okay. They can drive support apparatus, but you have to be with a paid firefighter going into any kind of hazardous environment. Okay. That, that's kind of the only restriction that we put on that. That's due to, due to the hours of training that's acquired with career personnel. Okay. Yeah. And the training is both physical and textbook. Yeah, right? yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. A, lot of, a, lot, a lot of nowadays has to do with uh, mental training. We see a lot of things out there. A lot of situations are very stressful, how to, how to think quickly off, off the cuff. And also um, with now today with the terrorist alerts, all the um, ways of other businesses operate. We have to have a lot of training on fire prevention, how we inspect buildings, pre-planning, and all the hours of, you know, in our training that, that we provide as well. So. so how rigorous is the physical training? It's very rigorous. I mean, yeah. Yeah, in order to become a firefighter, there's a course you have to take, an obstacle course, and it's timed. And it's the whole bunch, it's kind of a, all the tasks we would accomplish in a normal fire scene mm -hmm. being encompassed into this one, one exercise. I think there's 13 or 14. Yeah, 13. 13 or 14 stations the recruits have to go through. And this time, it's, it's very strenuous. I mean, yeah. it's more, it's like carrying 60 to 70 pounds of weight on your back, running, crawling, climbing, pulling things. So it's very, very strenuous. Yeah. Wow. And then once yeah. they get accepted as a volunteer, they have to go to what we call Firefighter 1 and Firefighter 2. Firefighter 1 is the basics. It's the book, the book end of it. 
firefighter two is actually live burn. They actually go into to fires that are set in training academies, and they do everything uh, you know any, any other firefighter will do. They'll crawl down hallways when there's real fire, smoke, uh, using the SCBA. So they do a lot of vigorous training. Um, it it kind of weeds out the people who are, you know, there's always this picture of I'm going to be a great firefighter, but sometimes when you're in that mask and you can't see your hand in front of your face and it's four or 500 degrees, some people go, I don't want to do this. Claustrophobia. <laughs> Claustrophobia sets in very quickly. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. I can so, imagine. Yeah. You know, when I was on council, the police chief had us go through what they call FATS, which is an acronym for Firearm Simulated Training. So we yep. could see what the police yep. Yep. had to do, and it's a, it's a real eye-opener. You ought to have some of the council members go through your training. Yeah, um, yeah, and we do invite them. Actually, every year, part of our training, we do a live burn training. So we go down, every platoon, there's a, um, four platoons that work here yep. full time. Uh, we go down to a variety of academies, and we actually simulate live burn training. And we always have part of the safety committee, we always invite the safety committee to come join us to see what it's like to wear the gear at the crawl in a smoke environment, so. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I, I think I saw one episode with that guy. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we did, Wasn't I think last Pat, year. Pat yeah. Hurley there? Pat Hurley, last yes. Year, yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, I actually yeah. took, um, several years ago, I took Jordan Glatt. Uh -huh. And uh, Cindy Martin went Cindy through Martin. years back, going and way back. We so, actually, yeah. we weren't supposed to do this, but we actually took the council people inside. It was, it was fake smoke, but real heat. So I had him up the top of the stairwell, and then the smoke came so I turned to the three of them. I think it was uh, Tom Getzendanner, Diane Clave, I believe it was. And, yeah, I think it was, yep. And Jordan yep. Glatt. And I, I pushed open the window, and I took my rope out of my pocket, and I threw it out the window, and I said, you can't go down the stairs now. You have to go this way. <laughs> and all three of them looked at me like, you're kidding, right? I go, I'm kidding now, but in real life. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> so I think great. we hope, hopefully we got a newfound respect out yeah. of that. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and that's that was on the heels. We, we received the grant back a few years ago for um, harnesses to help us bail out a window. So that was kind of the yes. front line to those that's harnesses. That's kind of was so, the yeah. reason yeah. why we yeah. did that. Now you have a pole here. <laughs> yep, we do. D is it used? Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Depends on what time of the night it is. Okay. Age, it's, it's usually age appropriate. <laughs> the so. younger guys use it, but us older guys, uh, okay. we kind of choose to use the stairs. I actually had a contractor here today. And uh, he saw the pole and goes, you guys still have one? Most firehouses yeah. are getting rid of them. Is that right? Yeah, we still have one. Are they? Yeah. 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 Okay. They actually, a lot of fires go to slides. They'll use a sliding board. Okay. So, yeah, it's it's okay. interesting. <laughs> but it's part of our tradition here, so we always had I like it. The yeah. pole. Yeah, kids so like it. Tradition. So now, now, speaking of the fire, do the kids try it when the kids are No, no, we don't no, let them. Okay. We, uh, we call it the yeah. superhero changing room. <laughs> kind of like <laughs> Batman. When it, I'm, I'm dating myself, but when Batman down, comes down the pole area. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah so. So speaking of the firehouse, um, these quarters are getting a little tight for you, aren't they? They are. Yeah, they are. And actually, there's been a um, lot of talk the last couple of years about uh, a plan to replace a firehouse. Uh, that's something where we've looked at our current building. It was from 1901. This building, the current building, the, the center section of our building was built in 1901. It was originally built as a house for uh, DPW crews. Then soon thereafter, the firehouse took it over. And then as we, the fire department, grew over the years, we had an addition built in 1948, another addition built in 1968, and a small interior renovation in the early 90s. Okay. But since then, um, the fire department has grown since then. Our apparatus is bigger, our needs are more, we need more storage. And we kind of outgrow, we actually outgrow this building. Uh, doesn't quite meet industry standards, what a fire should be, mm -hmm. uh, with um, uh, the size of the apparatus, the size of the fire trucks. Our uh, turnout gear requires special decontamination we come back and call. So all these things kind of encompass why we looked at why this building doesn't our needs anymore. So, so we're looking, we're looking to have a study done on what, are, what building we do need size-wise and where in town would accommodate a building that we would need. So we're kind of in the middle of that. We did a study two years ago on a needs assessment study. And it said, yes, this building is all that doesn't fit today's modern firefighter standards. And the next phase of that will, will be a, um, a feasibility study, which tells us what size building we do need, and then based upon th that data, we're in town to accommodate that kind of building. So, so it's, it's more a matter of um, current firefighter standards it is. than population. I mean, there's yeah, been some yeah. growth in population, but it's yeah. modest. And then, well, they kind of go hand in hand because with, with the population increase and more demand in the fire service, we use the building more. Our trucks are now the building a lot more than they used to be. We have to use a lot more equipment than we used to do years ago. But those kind of things, kind of, but it really is more towards, yeah, how the fire service has evolved over the last 50, 60 years, the needs assessment of what we need and all those kind of approaches, how we respond. And the safety right now, our ramp is very small. 
and because of the trucks are longer than they were years ago, we can't actually pull our trucks out on the front ramp without being in Broad Street. That's kind of created a little bit of an issue. So, but all the things kind of are brought together to kind of really come up with a plan what we can use. You know. Now, I see future. this truck over here is is pulled out almost to the street. Yep. Yeah. Um, will they all fit inside the garage? They'll fit in the garage, yeah, but is but the um, the spacing that should be required for any standard around the building, yeah. around the apparatus arm where they should be. So okay. it's a very tight quarters. Yeah. So okay. when you back the trucks up, instead of having a six foot span, it's like a four foot span. Okay. Some of the doors can open up; it'll hit the side walls. So okay. and the heights of the heights of the bays okay. can accommodate some modern technology with the fire engines. We have to kind of customize them to make them a little smaller. So yeah. just so, backing in could be a problem too, because you know, yeah. backing in is backing in is very unsafe. Right, so you know, you, you conceivably could run somebody over. We have to have a spotter. Yep. So sometimes apparatus has to sit on the front ramp until we have enough personnel inside to back the apparatus in. Yeah. Uh, exactly. You know, obviously if it's an emergency scene, you do what you have to do. But when you're backing into the building, you gotta you gotta follow safety procedures. So backing in sometimes is an issue. Yeah. And right. you know, not to mention yeah. the traffic we block and everything else. Right. So. Right. Yeah, so. so this is ongoing. I mean, you say that it is, it's yeah. it's being studied it, it, and it's a big project. It's a big process. It, it is a big expense, uh, but it's something you know we're looking into. So, what, what do you think in terms of a of a timeline uh, that you're talking about? Uh, we put together. We're talking um, years, right? When we first yeah, when we first did a product, and we put together a five year capital plan. In hopes that when we start the process within five years, we'll have capital funding available to start the process of building. So, but a lot of things have to happen in between that. So, you know, okay, you have to okay. have some models, have to have some public hearings on it, and you know, kind of get some buy-in for the project. So okay. But now, our, our big our big challenge is uh, where to build it. So obviously, you know, the only so only place that in the community can build a firehouse. We're trying to find out where the best part of town to build a new firehouse. Okay. Um, Lots of taxpayers will be watching, so just for the benefit of the taxpayers, when you do something like that, it doesn't result in, a, in an increase in taxation because bonds are issued yeah, and exactly. it's paid for over the life of yep. many, yep. many years. Traditionally, it's a capital expenditure, which like you said, is bonded, so yeah. it's, more like, it's more like your mortgage. You know, you, yeah. you have the initial investment and it's paid off in payment throughout the life of the, of the, of the yeah. bond. So, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, our viewers have probably noticed by now that you guys are both wearing pink shirts. You are. Now, I, as, the chief say, as the chief says, real men wear pink. I just put mine on. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not that your twins or anything. No, yeah, so you'll see 32 guys around the, around the community with uh, pink shirts. Okay. It, it is uh, tell us, tell Breast us Cancer Awareness Month. So what, what Breast are Cancer Awareness Month okay. in October. Okay. And I know it's some degree, it's us all our lives, breast cancer. Yep. Uh, so it's a good way to have the guys get in the community to show the pink and support. So, okay. yeah, so it's good way to get it. Interesting. So, so all yeah. month long, all the firemen will be wearing pink Correct. shirts. Just for the month of October, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. Great. So, Super. Yeah, it's nice Excellent. Month. <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, so, um, Don, there's an honor guard. You yeah, mentioned um, to me? actually, Chief Evers was a little bit more versed on it than I am. Okay. It, was his, it was his baby to start. Yeah, uh, so you can speak on it. Yeah. Well, yeah. we have a group of guys, uh, new new career members. Uh, it's Chris Esposito, who's one of our newer firefighters. Brian Tavis, who's a new member. New member. Uh, Tom Penn, and I forget the last guy. Who's the last guy? I'm drawing a blank Espo, here. Espo, Lemons, and and Brian Tavis. Brian uh, Tavis, yeah. and uh, the, tr the tradition behind an honor guard is to one represent our flag of the United States, mm -hmm. uh, our department flag as well. And uh, we just go out to you know um, community functions and we uh, support both the American flag and the fire department, get our presence out there. Fourth of July was a great example. They were out there in, in uh, all their glory and they were, they were uh, present when the flag was raised there at Memorial Field. Uh, unfortunately, there are some sad times we have to use them too. We're going to start putting them out at, at funerals for members and things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but the guys are really into it. Chris Esposito is the uh, leader of that group, and uh, he's very enthusiastic, and he's always providing ideas. He's getting equipment for us, uh, you know, carrying those. I never knew this, but there are actually axes that are purely for honor guards because they're lighter. When they first started, we had them, we had them carrying the real axes. How heavy? And they're pretty heavy. I don't know, probably ten pounds or so. Yeah, but when you're pounds. when you're carrying them for yeah, an hour, sure. <laughs> think heavy. of the parade. They get pretty heavy. So it, it's a learning experience for me. It was the chief's idea, and it, it's it's gone over very well. Um, the Elks, uh, actually, if I don't if I remember correctly, the Elks donated some money toward it too to help did, us get yeah, started. Yeah. That was actually their first gig, as you would say. <laughs> um, that the Elks Club had a uh, flag ceremony. 
a neighbor and the flags if you give her the school, flags yeah. and that was their first uh, appearance so they donated some money towards the uh, honor guard so it's great so very it's real life flags very well received yeah it's a very well received that's perfect so now we have police and fire yes. correct yep. two, yeah, we, two and they work together yeah. good yeah. so okay, it's good great. good um, special operations division what is that yeah it's something new um, special operations normally you look at the fire department we put out fires and we go to fire calls but Another component of what we do is called special operations, and that's the calls that you don't see all that day. We call it our high-risk, low-frequency events, which means we don't go to them that often, but when we do go to them, the, possi the, the possibility of something happening is very high for the high-risk events. So things like um, if you have construction in the streets, there's trench rescue where people work below grade, um, dirt falls in, we have to go get them out. There's all ways of doing that. There is um, confined space rescue. A lot of pharmaceutical companies in town, they work in very big but small opening vats to work in. So that all requires special equipment, special training, and usually long duration incidents. So it takes a lot of resources to manage these kind of scenes. So with the current um, takeover of Merck from Celgene has two plants in town, that kind of upped our awareness level on the potential for these events happening in town. And we deformed the division so we could better prepare ourselves, the farm, to have more of a little, like a little task force to deal with these kind of events. Now, Celgene on the Western site, the one that was previously occupied by Merck. Um, Merck had a um, some kind of they fire, fire capacity. Uh, yeah, they right? had a fire brigade. So ever since okay. that site was open back in the 50s when Sibagagi occupied, there was always a fire brigade on site. And the fire brigade's job was to do um, initial uh, assessment. So if a fire alarm goes off or there's a fire at the site, they would go there first, they would respond. And if they felt there was anything of significance, they would call the fire department and we would respond. When Celgene took over Merck uh, last year, the, um, the fire brigade left with Merck, so there's no more fire brigade on that property. So that's where we kind of came into play. So even though we always respond there, we relied on the old brigade to kind of be the first eyes on scene to tell us what was going on. And if it's something that was insignificant, they would cancel us. But if something of any significance, we would, we would uh, respond in. And they also did, did all the operations for this, that campus. Okay. So, okay. so with the excess of that brigade, it kind of upped that word stuff a little more a little more involved in special operations than we, than we had in pre previous years. Okay, all right. Um, accreditation. Don, you were telling me yeah. about third-party evaluations. Yeah, uh, Summit was one of, uh, I think, only three departments in the state of New Jersey yeah. that was accredited. Um, and it's, a, it's an international accreditation. It's not just a local thing. It's uh, international. Uh, and it's a, it's a company, an agency that comes out, and um, they give us um, outlines of things that we have to review and there's certain requirements we have to meet so we, we review that internally we provide that information to the accreditation personnel uh, they review it and then they actually come out and do an on-site evaluation they go through everything from what kind of turnout gear we have to our response times to what kind of apparatus we have to personnel mutual aid agreements they review everything even, even tours that we give what kind of public education do we have so they review everything um, our accreditation actually expired in August, and uh, we're in the process. Nothing bad happened. No, not at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened was, four year, four yeah, year. it's a four-year thing. But what happened was, um, it actually got a little bit more um, harder to get. It mm -hmm. went from the eighth edition to the ninth edition. Okay. We could have done it again under the eighth edition, but we decided to go for the harder ninth edition. Uh, there's some things that have been added. Okay. Uh, just for an example, and I think we'll talk about this in a little bit. Um, we never had to de deal with. Uh, aircraft stuff before. Summit doesn't have an airport. Well, now we're going to have a helipad pretty soon. So that's something we never had to deal with before. So now that's part of the ninth edition that we're going to have to address. So we address all that. And they actually have uh, reviewers that come out and they review everything. They'll go through everything we do here. And then it goes down to their committee and they make a decision. And last time through the good work of uh, Chief Houck and Deputy Chief uh, DeGroote and all of the officers that were here, we were able to get that accreditation. and it was it, and it, it actually helped the city of Summit with its, its ISO rating or insurance services yeah. organization rating. Um, the average homeowner probably wouldn't see that, but the commercial occupancies, uh, it will should help lower their fire insurance rates. Can't yeah. can't say that's for sure. Yeah, but at that's least what everybody says. Yeah, yeah. But um, moving yeah. forward, right now we're working with uh, Lieutenant Jenks, and the chief and I and all the other officers are are, are starting the process to get the ninth edition complete and. Hopefully in the next yeah. 18 months to 20 months, we'll uh, yeah. be there again. Yeah. 
So right now, we're a, um, when our accreditation expired, we 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 uh, created as an application status. So right now, we're applying for the next next uh, accreditation process. So. Okay. So even though ours expired, we're still in the process of getting the ninth edition. Okay. So I think we think it was more of a challenge to try to reach for the ninth edition than duplicate what we did last yeah. time. So. Yeah. That's quite an honor. It is. Sure. It's it's in the yeah. whole United States. Yeah. I look at it as any kind of business model you look at in in in, um, in the municipality or in the business world. You always constantly looking for improvements, how you can better um, um, deliver service to whatever it be, public, the product. And it's a great way of us looking at our policies, our operations, refining them, adjusting them to modern technologies so we can deliver a great product at the end of the day. And that's what it's all about, delivering service to students at the summit. And this process kind of forced us to look at where we stand, how we hold up, what we need to adjust, good and bad, about mm -hmm. our operations. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. We're looking forward to it. We're excited yeah. about it. We, so. we could sit in these four walls and say we're the best fire department. Who's going to who's going to contest it? But when you have somebody else come out and look at what you do and they kind of verify what you think, yeah. it, it's pretty it's rewarding. Good, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. So it's, yeah. it's good. So well, it's it's good. Yeah. yeah. Everybody wants to do a good job if you have somebody coming in yeah. and doing yeah. something yeah. like yeah. that. It's a lot of work. You know, a lot of, a lot of answers. You don't want to. A lot of questions you don't want to answer. And this this process forced you to answer those hard questions. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So it brings out your 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 strengths, but also weaknesses, which you need to adjust. So. Okay. It's a great process. Now you guys have a, a health and safety committee and there's new leadership? Yeah, we, have, we always had one. It kind of come to go. We have actually, firefighter health and safety is one of our top priorities for our, our guys in fitness. So the committee we have now looks at um, all our policies, our safety policies, how we operate, good and bad. Anytime there's a line of duty death or a severe injury in the fire service, we look at those reports. A company called NIOSH does a report and they investigate what happened. We'll look at those. We'll look at how we operate and how we could avoid something happening like that in Summit. So it's an ongoing, every month they meet, and this go over policies, procedures, anything happened, there are guys close calls, some had a near miss of the fire, we'll come back, we'll do a report, we'll talk about it, what went wrong, what went bad, what we do to avoid it in the future, so it's a good way to keep us going. Yeah. Plus our fitness benefit, we do physicals every year. Every year, firefighters go through a full physical, top to bottom, and that's part of our safety education as well, so make sure our firemen are fit. Um, a heart attack to the leading cause of firefighter death, and number two is cancer. Uh, we're exposed to a lot of uh, carcinogenic and smoke. But knowing those things, that's why we kind of keep that, the physical, the top priority, and our safety committee. So yeah. everybody has the, the top notch fitness, uh, most information, and the tool to kind of, you know, come up with a solution if something does happen yeah. to a firefighter. Yeah, as, uh, when, as I mentioned when we were preparing for this show, I was, I was stunned when I learned that the, the most dangerous uh, occupation in the United States is municipal worker what we could we yeah. put together fire police. and police yep. Yep. and public works um it's more dangerous than than miners yeah, yeah so it's just, you know people yeah. don't realize that yeah. so and, and yeah. a kind of uh, an interesting fact is that um they always talk about how fires progress how quickly they, re they progress and there's studies that come out every five years they do tests on fires and today's new modern technologies and new building materials and 20 years ago, they called the 20 minute rule. So usually had, if a fire started in your home, you had about 20 minutes to a half hour to get out of your, out of your house. And uh, nowadays it's four to six minutes. So that, that cushion of um, security has really increased, you know, decreased a lot over the years. So. Yeah, yeah, so. It's amazing. So um, tell me, we have just a few minutes left. Um, I'm interested in uh, the future. Um, what, what are your challenges, your goals? What's, what can we look forward to with the fire department in the future? Well, I think one of our challenges is um, just keeping up with today with the modern technology, the, the, the quick um, technology today. Everything is constantly changing, the needs of the fire service, the police, and everybody around us. And to actually to work together to meet those challenges, stay ahead of them, and um, try to keep our firefighters the train that, that, that they have, you know, keep okay. them going. Okay. Uh, far looking forward, I mean, if you have any yeah. Uh, well, I know we. I know there was a, a discussion about staffing. You know, some people were talking about some staffing here. Um, you know, just just as the chief said, training is a big issue. Uh, staffing, new firehouse is a big issue. Um, more more importantly, is is when we get our volunteers. Uh, I'm I'm going to sound like an old guy here, but sometimes my thinking is a little bit different than the new guys, and we need to we need to. Uh, bridge that gap yep. when we get the new guys here. So, and we've been pretty successful. That has something to do with you know, our leadership here, the accreditation process, 
our old past practices of training and, and all of our policies and procedures. So we, we have the ability to do that. But those are some challenges that I think that we're, we're, we're looking forward to you know, looking forward to accomplish as we move forward. Okay. And you're going to be uh, hosting a new uh, season of yes. With Summit Fire. Yes. yes. And so some of these things that uh, yeah. you've we're talked about. Get to meet some of the new guys, get to meet some of the new officers. We'll talk about some of the equipment that we have. Uh, I was thinking about getting the TV out on the road maybe to show you how we do pre-planning and all that kind of stuff. I, know I think might, that would be great. might yeah. be a little boring to some people, but it's interesting. We have to get store owners to let us into their <laughs> store, so that yeah. might not be that easy. Yeah. But uh, something as simple as, you know, how does somebody shut the water off in their house? What does the water valve look like? What's yeah, the yeah. gas valve yeah. look like? Yeah. Things like that. So, you know, we had hoped to get this done earlier in the year. Um, I had some, I had a medical issue earlier that's fine now. Uh, so that kind of set us behind about two or three months. So mm -hmm. uh, hopefully moving forward, we're good. We find that uh, the viewers are most interested in the shows that are out of the studio, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we can have some really interesting stuff in the studio, but what it boils down to is uh, a couple of people talking to each other. Yeah. Absolutely. Which can be interesting, but when you get, you know, fire trucks and stuff sure. on the scene, as you're talking good. about, Don, it, um, it really does make it interesting. Now, now, Chief, before we finish up, I know um, you wanted to say a couple of words about the National Fallen Fire. Yes, yeah, and thank you foundation. for that. Yes, yeah. So there's a uh, foundation called the National Fallen Fire Foundation. It's based at Emmitsburg, Maryland, which is also the National Fire Academy. And their sole mission is to honor and respect the families and firefighters who were killed in the line of duty. So this year, um, we lost 79 firefighters in 2015. Say that number again. 79 firefighters were killed in the line of duty in 2015. 33 other firefighters who died this year sustained injuries from previous years that uh, passed away this year. So, uh, so that's the numbers. And uh, Team Summit New Jersey's fire department has been honored for the last 12 years on going down to Emmitsburg, Maryland and being part of the organizational structure to have the event which is on Sunday. And the president usually comes, there's thousands of people throughout the country to come. And so we work, we work very hand-in-hand -hand with the foundation to help organize this event. And it's a great foundation. The website is www.firehero.org. Log on to it, it tells you all about how you can help out firefighters and their families. There's scholarship funds, a lot of fundraisers throughout the year. So it's a great organization. So One more time on the website. www.firehero.org. Okay, right. great. Very good. Well, thank you very much. You. This has been thank a you. great discussion, and yeah, um, look forward it. to more episodes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.